Come to Lethbridge and join an innovative community for entrepreneurs. With more than a quarter of the 100,000 population under the age of 34, Lethbridge brims with energy. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow. Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, this is Robert Smigel coming to you today with Canada's podcast, where we talk to the entrepreneurs who are making it happen here in British Columbia. Today's guest is Mark Raison, born and raised in Surrey. Mark is the owner of the company driveauto.com, and that's with two Vs, and has over 14 years of experience working with car dealerships, assisting them in transferring their inventory onto online platforms. Well, Mark, welcome to Canada's podcast, and thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, uh, to chat with you. Awesome. Okay. Now we know you're from Surrey, born and raised, so you got that down, but give us the details on your current business, driveauto.com. Yeah. So drive is a new automotive uh, marketplace, marketplace slash classified app. So anybody who's looking to um, buy a new vehicle, they go on to drive and it's, they just kind of swipe through the vehicles and kind of pick and choose your your vehicles and you match with them and you start chatting to the seller right away no more putting in your email address no more you know phone numbers and all this kind of stuff it's just direct messaging right through the platform sounds like tinder for automobiles that's what a lot of people say yes yeah okay cool um did you need financing to start your company and how do you currently make money in your business now yeah, so the company is pre-revenue. We're, we're, we just started and launched in the last couple of months. So we're still on our beta phase. Uh, financing, I'm trying to go through the venture route. So I have raised like a, a friends and family uh, round of financing, a little bit of money. I've put in a significant amount of money myself. Um, and uh, in a project like this, um, financing is very important. So we're always looking for new opportunities and, and new partners in that way. So how will the app make money when it's up and going? Is there a fee of some sort? Uh, yeah, it's it? a great, great question. So the business model would be paper lead. So uh, sellers, primarily car dealerships would be paying um, for leads. Okay. So it's like a PPC campaign of some kind that yeah. uh, goes to the app. Okay. I want you to give me a key piece of knowledge or information about your industries that our listeners can learn from. Anything that's kind of general that, uh, you, know, other, you know, buying a car obviously is pretty obvious, but is there anything that uh, has changed over the last yeah, year? Yeah, um, really in the last year, I would say my advice now is if you're looking to buy a car, buy a car. Um, inventory and supply chains have really tightened up with COVID over the last year. So um, supply is in, in very short, um, you know, there is just as much supply out there. There's a lot more buyers and sellers right now when it comes to vehicles. So if you're in the market, I would say buy a car now before, um, you know, the prices start going up and supply just isn't there anymore. Okay. What is the long-term vision and what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC, or even Canada? Yeah. So I'm born and raised in a suburb of Vancouver called Surrey. Um, so I'm organically and just naturally launching drive in the Vancouver market. Um, we test out um, whether it's a viable option, uh, we gain metrics, um, you know, we get stats and all that kind of stuff. And then we build from there. So we expand to the rest of BC, expand into Alberta, eventually nationwide. And ultimately, you know, we want to be in North America and, and beyond, but you got to start small and that's kind of where we are right now. So that's kind of the long-term, uh, long-term goal is, is start here and just organically spread across the country. And then hopefully over the, over North America. Okay. Well, we've learned a lot about you and your company. We want to talk about you and what it looks like 
you doing business in here in British Columbia? What are the biggest benefits for you in being an entrepreneur here in Vancouver? Give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but also give us the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye out for them. Yeah, so the easy thing for me is the fact that I'm, I'm born and raised here. So um, it's not like I came here and didn't know anybody. Um, I, I, I can go and visit my parents anytime I want while I'm here. You know, my friends and that I grew up with, they're all here. So it's very easy for me to, to uh, feel at home here as it is my home. Um, the hard part is, is not being in a big like startup hub. Um, a lot of resources out there and a lot of podcasts that focus on the startup world are really focused on Silicon Valley. And when they talk about, you know, things like numbers and financing and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's in the context of Silicon Valley, which is not a, a reality for a lot of hubs outside of Silicon Valley. So um, expectations and, and stuff like that is, is always a, a challenge to figure out in a place like Vancouver. Um, you know, it's, we're known for, for our, our beautiful mountains and our water and, and everything, but the startup world, we're, we're still trying to, to find a name for ourselves. Okay. I want you to imagine you've never been to British Columbia before. If you were to start all over again, you just moved here to Vancouver, BC, but this time you don't know anyone. Knowing what you know now, what would you do and how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? Oh, man, I, uh, that's a difficult question. I'm a person that believes that, um, you know, go in the path of least resistance. Um, you know, the, the notion of do what you want and the money will follow isn't, isn't something that uh, I think is a reality for most people. You know, you ask most 13 year olds these days and they want to be an influencer, you know, 15 years ago, that didn't, that didn't even exist. Um, Somebody's got to go around and and pick up the garbage. Somebody has got to go around and fix the phone lines, right? There's all these jobs that, that need to be done. And the reality is that, Hey, I've got a price for everything. Um, I I'll pick up garbage if, you know, I'm probably not going to pick up for 40,000 a year, but I'll pick it up for 400,000 a year. Um, I've got a price for everything. Um, I believe that you go in the, you know, you take a path of least resistance. So if I was going somewhere new, like Vancouver, I would just try to get um, planted somewhere and learn and and try to find where the value is there. Um, Where, you know, where can I find, value and and trade that value and and learn from it if that makes sense yeah okay well you're a young single guy so you don't have kids or anything like that like that so let's talk about your routine what does the first hour look like for you when you wake up in the morning do you have a specific routine or a ritual that helps you get motivated to start your day yeah so it's very different uh each day um I'm an avid biker so there's some days where i might uh i might go and i might get up at the at sunrise and go for a bike ride and, and kick off my day that way. Some days I might just simply sleep in. Um, if I've got nothing scheduled early, um, you know, my bed is a comfy place in the morning. I like to like to stay in there as, as long as possible, but uh, it's simply just, just getting up, turning on the music, turning on my computer and just going to work. Um, my office is, is my, my living room essentially right now. And uh, so it's really easy for me just to get up, turn on the music, turn on the computer and get to work. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired differently? I don't think that they need to be, but I think if you were to take a poll, you would find that a lot of entrepreneurs are wired a little bit differently. And I think it's because of the risks that come along with being an entrepreneur. You know, it's, it's being an entrepreneur is, is glamorized today. You know, I, I really don't like that word entrepreneur. Um, you know, I like business owner and, and all that kind of stuff instead, but an entrepreneur means that you have an idea and you're really trying to get it going. Um, the reality is for every successful entrepreneur that you, you hear about and, and, you know, the, Jeff Bezos and the Mark Zuckerbergs and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot more nobodies that tried something and failed and you don't know about. 
Um, and, and that's not talked about in the, in the, in the entrepreneurship world, but that is a reality is, is most entrepreneurs that get out there and they start something um, that doesn't mean guaranteed success. And, and most times it, it means you're probably going to fail. And, and what do you do after that? And, and what are the stories after failure? You know, that's something that uh, I've always been curious about. Okay. Let's talk about the books you're reading. What books are you reading now and why, or even audiobooks or podcasts? And can you recommend any books for our listeners who are also aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah, I don't, I'm not much of a reader, to be honest. Um, I don't mind, I uh, eat like, um, what's the app? There's an app that there's, there's an app for listening audiobooks and stuff like that. Um, I like that, you know, podcasts when I'm driving, I really enjoy listening to podcasts and whatnot. So I'm much more of a podcast listener than I am a, a book reader. Um, and you know, I just, I think there's a lot of podcasts out there in the startup world that I, li- I listen to. I don't think there's anything specific. Um, and they all change over the years, you know, podcasts aren't that new anymore. You've, you I've had some come and, and some go and, there's new ones that I find every day. So I'm always learning myself. Okay. Any online or offline tools that you use on a daily basis? Um, not really. There's a lot of CRM systems and, and SaaS companies that, you know, sell this to a company, sell that to a company. You know, I'm very, very basic. I find that I can do a lot with, with PowerPoint and Excel and, and, and everything. Um, but one that, one that I've learned to, to go to often is, is Fiverr. Um, it's an online, um, place where people kind of just sell their, uh, their expertise and, and everything. Yeah, that's a, I, that's a very popular one. I think for going to get design or voiceovers, real quick, dirty stuff that you need to get done really quickly. Uh, doesn't cost you much. You can kind of get that done. I use it all the time quite like it yeah you, you if you're starting out you can you can find a lot of useful um, people on there as well as there's a lot of time wasters and everything as well um, I've used it a few times and find I've, I found great value in in some gigs and I've <laughs> I've wasted my money in others so yeah okay if you weren't doing what you do now what would you like to do for a profession um I don't know can I be a professional athlete sure um, yeah yeah anything. I, I mean, like I said before, I'm, I'm a person um, of, I go down the path of least resistance. I try to find where there's opportunity and I go down that path and I try to dig and, and find the opportunity there. Um, I, about 10 years ago, I got into motorcycle ro- racing, like road racing, and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, in a perfect world, I would probably be doing something with motorcycles um, in, in the race scene. But the economics of that is uh, is not really realistic for for me in my life in my lifestyle. So you seem to like things with two wheels. Yeah, it's uh, there's just something about going around a corner at 200 kilometers an hour with your knee on the ground, um, you know, and and the power that that has, um, and mountain biking and, and road biking. It's a it's a great alternative. Tech Connect, a center for entrepreneurship and innovation in Lethbridge, has been springboarding entrepreneurs to success for 10 years and counting. Our spirit of innovation is a way of life. We have an incredible environment. Our innovators are not afraid to stand apart because they know that in Lethbridge, we are brighter together. We are Lethbridge. Come and join us. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. What kind of a job would you not like to do? Couldn't do it. Um, you know, I, I look at people who work in fast food restaurants and the fact that they're like, the, they're the minimal, they're the people who you look at in society and it's like, yeah, that's minimum wage. But if you actually look, they're probably one of the hardest working people like they're just working nonstop if you if you look at a fast yeah. food clerk and i've always it's always baffled me that these are the people that are getting paid the the least amount in our society yet they're probably working the hardest and everything and early uh, mornings too early mornings wow early mornings like overnight shifts and all that kind of stuff you know i was told early on in my career um a lot of a lot of employers they like to see like mcdonald's and all that kind of stuff on your resume 
Um, and I get it just because it probably creates great worth at work ethics. And Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. There's a lot of people, uh, very, uh, very successful that started working in various, uh, food service businesses and they learn discipline. I think that's one of the things and structure and, uh, you know, uh, getting things done consistently. I think consistency, I and mean, if you work for something like McDonald's, you're going to get, uh, you know, years and years of, uh, you know, fine tuning and process of which you're going to also use it as a, as education, how they did that and how to take those skills and apply it to your own world. So, um, yeah, Absolutely. interesting. In business, what's your favorite word, quote, or sentence that you like to use? Um, I don't really use a lot. Um, there's one that, there's a couple that I really enjoy hearing. Um, one's a, a Warren Buffett uh, quote, and this one's more to do with like just the stock market and all that kind of stuff, but it's when others are greedy, be, be fearful, and when others are fearful, be greedy. I, I really like that. Um, I translate that. Well, it's, it's exactly what it, as it, as it sounds, but it's also when everybody goes right, I like to go left. When everybody goes left, I like to go right. Um, you know, I don't like to go where everybody else is going. I want to, I want to go where everybody isn't and where everybody is going to be. Um, that's, that's my mentality. Uh, the other one is, is time your most valuable asset. Use it wisely. Uh, I saw that I was at a dealership years and years ago and I was in their boardroom and I saw that up on their, uh, on their wall. And I thought that was a great quote because it's, it's time. It's, it's an asset in this world that you can't, you can't buy. You can't, you know, I guess you can kind of technically sell it. It's what you do every day with the jobs, mm -hmm. but you're never going to get it back. You can't, you know, you can't purchase more time, you know, for yourself. So. Yeah, I think it can be a little bit more generous when, when you're young, but it's good you, you've identified that now at a young age because most people don't figure that out till they're older, right? So Yeah, think, and it, it's, it's, it's one thing to identify it and it's another to live by. Yeah. What's your <laughs> least favorite word or sentence you do not like to hear? Um, I don't, I probably, nothing. It, it's silence. <laughs> That's silence? probably what I don't, yeah. Um, more than you know, if I hear something, at least it's definitive. You know, I don't mind a no. At least I know it's a no. Um, yeah. And it's, I'm not being, I'm not being, um, you know, carried along or anything like that. Uh, it's definitive. You know, I don't know. Okay, well, I'll find somebody who does know. Like, uh, you know, any, anything that's said to me, there's always something I can, I can use. But if, if it's silence, then, then uh, what am I going to do with that? I also just don't like... If I'm alone, I, I need some stimulation. Like I need some music on in the background, all that kind of stuff. So it's just simply silence. Okay. If you had to pick one or two words to describe yourself, what would it be and why? Um, I would say a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Um, I like to do extreme things. You know, I would love to be a get my palate's license uh is on my bucket list uh like i said i raced a motorcycle years ago um i do a lot of mountain biking now i've bungee jumped i haven't skydived yet but it's on my bucket list as well um so i would say adrenaline adrenaline junkie um yeah okay anything keeping you up at night these days business uh, thinking about it uh, my mind I mean, it's, it's weird, especially in the entrepreneurship world. And when you're, when you're first starting a business, when you lay in bed at night, you try to sleep the, the tricks that your mind plays on you and, and uh, the thoughts that come and go and, and everything it's, what am I going to do tomorrow? Like, what am I planning for tomorrow? And then a, a random thought comes and should I write this down or am I going to remember this tomorrow? It's just your mind late at night just wanders everywhere. Um, like I said, I, I raised some friends and family and friends and family around, uh, a while back when I first started drive. So if I fail, you know, am, am I, am I going to be okay with not giving money back to a few friends of mine who, who gave me money for this business and for me, for me to succeed? Can I handle a day if I go to them and I say, Hey, look, I, I got to shut this down. It's just not working. So stuff like that is uh, something that keeps me up. Okay. I want you to give us the top three things on your inspired life list. You did touch on this earlier uh, with getting a pilot license, but things that you want to do, travel more, do uh, philanthropy, maybe write a book, 
Um, pilot licenses obviously is one of them. Anything else? Yeah. I mean, I would love to, uh, I would love to have my pilot license. I, uh, you know, I really enjoy BC. I, I, I do enjoy living in, in and around Vancouver. I, I do think it's one of the best places on earth to live. Uh, I took a bit of a sabbatical in 2018 and, and traveled the world for, for about nine months. Um, and I just, I enjoy here. So really what I want to do, and I would consider my life complete is, look, I've got a place on, you know, up in the Okanagan somewhere. I've got a beach house. I've got a place in, in one of the ski resorts, whether it be Whistler or Sun Peaks. And then I've got my, you know, let's say my South Surrey or Crescent Beach home. That's, that's kind of what I'm working toward in life. Um, I got my winter place. I got my summer place. Um, I'm in the mountain to go mountain biking whenever I want in the summertime. I'm at the beach and, and the boat. That's kind of what I'm, I'm striving to be. That's, that's my life completion goal is, uh, okay. is just to, just to settle down. And, and it really in BC, we have everything we need here. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you know, everybody complains about Vancouver and how it's so rainy, but you go up on one of the local mountains, whether it be Cypress or Grouse or, or Seymour, you know, after a week of rain where it's been snowing up there and it's just blue skies and you can ski over and, and, and see the city. There's no better place yeah. than, than that in the world. So that is, yeah. Yeah. It's just to, to, to settle down and, and make life here. Okay. Do you have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs throughout Canada? Um, yeah, especially if you're looking to start a new business and start a startup, um, it's, it's a lot of work. E, there's going to be ups, there's going to be extreme highs, and there's going to be extreme lows. And it's one thing that I was told over and over again. Um, and you just don't really fully understand it until you go through it yourself. And that's kind of what I've been going through. So if you're, uh, if you're, if you're looking to, to build a new company and, and build startup do it but just be prepared to uh really learn about yourself okay good mark you ready to have some fun yeah are we going to the magical island we are going to take you to the magical island because we know that you're always online you're always working and you're always very very busy and things are keeping you up at night thinking about your business so uh we're going to take you to a small tropical island just off of fiji that only has one phone booth there there is no internet this place does exist. We're going to drop you off there. You won't have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. You can use the phone booth located there anytime to call the boat. We'll come pick you up. How long would you last before you made that call? And what would you do while you were there? I would relax for, uh, let's say, two months. And then I would get bored. And then I would call to come home. I two could, months? I could, That's pretty yeah. good. Oh yeah. I mean, depends who's there with me. Right. Um, yeah, I have the right, if I have, if I have the right people there with me, I could, I could live there. Um, yeah, I'm a no internet, person. but you're, you're young. You grew up with the internet. How, how can you <laughs> live without it? Uh, you know, I, um, I'm old enough to remember life without the internet, but young enough to fear life without it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, it, yeah. my cell phones just became a thing when I was in high school. So like entering high school and all this kind of like cell phones, not necessarily um, smartphones, but just cell phones. Um, when I was in grade eight, nobody had phones. When I was in grade 12, maybe half, half the, the, the grade three quarters had cell phones. And then it was really after I graduated in, in 2006 where smartphones came around and everything. So I, uh, I can't imagine what kids these days are going through in high school with, with cell phones and, and the technology and everything. But um, yeah, I got to experience a little bit of that when I traveled, I was in an Island um, just in Cambodia where basically the electricity was on for 10 hours of the day and you didn't have cell service. And I, I was there for a, a week and it was great. Um, and I could do it over and over again if I had the resources to, for sure. Um, okay. Sounds yeah, I like, like to get. I, I like to get away. I, I don't like the whole social media stuff, to be honest. I'm not a. I'm not a big person on on social media. 
I know I should be just for like personal branding and being an entrepreneur and all that kind of stuff, but it's just, it's not where I spend my time. And I think I'm glad I don't. Okay. It's not, has not engulfed your life, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. No, they're, they're great tools and, and everything. Um, but I haven't let them engulf me. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Mark, we're going to wrap things up. How can our listeners get hold of you? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? Yeah, so you can always email me at mark.raison. So it's just M-A-A-R-K dot R-A-I-S-O-N at Drive Auto. That's Drive, D-R-I-V-V-E with two Vs, auto, A-U-T-O dot com. That's a long, long-winded way to say mark.raison at driveauto.com. So driveauto.com with two Vs. Remember that yeah. one. You got to have the two Vs yeah. in there. Okay, Mark, thanks for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Robert. I've really enjoyed okay. it. Great. We'll see you next time. Bold, vibrant, technological. In Lethbridge, our spirit of innovation is more than just the way we do business. It's the way we live and the way we succeed. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow in Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright, affordable choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge.